from air on a film. And now they give you the thickness of the film, 10 to the minus 4 centimeters. Okay? They give you the thickness. And the refractive index of the film is 1.375. <coughs> so the problem we have is, So, number one, right? So, you have air, film, air. N equals one, N equals one, N equals 1.375, I think it was. Ah, uh, uh, and the wavelength of the light in air is 500 nanometers. Oh, and the thickness of the film is 10 to the minus 4 centimeters. So now they give you the thickness. Okay. Hmm. So it says, um, they give you the wavelength, the thickness, and then it says part of the light enters the film and is reflected back at the second surface. So there's a reflection from the first surface and then there's also a reflection from the second surface. So part of the light goes into the film and then gets reflected. So how many wavelengths are contained along the path of this light in the film? It's asking like how many, if I say one wavelength, two wavelengths, how many of those are contained inside the film? So how do I answer that question? So number of wavelengths. in the film. So how do I answer that? It's essentially, it is, it's actually a very simple question. It's just that it's phrased in a way that sounds difficult. If I, yes, go ahead. So if we use from N0, All right, so we find the wavelength of the light in the field. Let's, how about we do that? So we have N air, lambda air, N film, lambda film. So the wavelength of the light in the film is N air, lambda air, N film. So one times 500 nanometers divided by 1.375, right? Okay, so we know the wavelength of the light in the field. Then what? and then take the thickness and divide by lambda. So should I take T divided by lambda F? Yeah. Mm. Almost. Remember the same thing that you did a little while ago. Because it's gonna go T down and another T up. So there will be a number of wavelengths going down plus a number of wavelengths going up. So it's just the whole distance that the wave is gonna travel in the film, down and up, which is 2T, divided by the wavelength. Good, that's good. So it would be 2t divided by the wavelength of the light in the film. So that would simply be twice the thickness, which is 10 to the minus five meters. I'm oh, sorry, 10 to the minus four, which would be 10 to the minus six meters. I wanna use meters. And the wavelength of the light in the film is 500 nano, that's 10 to the minus nine, divided by g, 1.375. So, what do you get? How many wavelengths are you going to get there? Uh, you can do, you can do two times 1.375 
10 to the minus 7 times 10. So, wait, divided by 5, and 5 there, that'll be 2, 4, so this will be 4 times 1.375. Do that and see what you get. I'm trying to do a lot of the, in my head before I... You got 550. Oh, wait. How wait, much wait. is 4 times 1.375? 5.5. 5.5. Good. That's the answer. Oh, wait. Questions? And that's the right answer. I remember it. But that question is like this. Suppose I know the distance from this wall to that wall. And I have, it's a tile floor. And I have a tile, 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 all the way up to there. Complete tiles. Or maybe, maybe the last tile is part of it, right? And I ask you, how many tiles are in there? So how would you answer that question? No room. Hmm? No room. Well, from room. there to there, how many tiles would I put from that wall to this wall? How could I figure out how many tiles I need to put there, for example, if I wanted to buy tiles? The size of the tile versus the length of the... So how would I get the number of tiles? What would be the calculation that I need to do? The length from wall to wall divided by the length okay. of each tile. So. The length from wall to wall here, the length is from here, down and up, that's the length. And I divide by the length of one tile, which is a wavelength. That's how I get this 5.5. Right? That'll tell me how many wavelengths are in there. The length is 2t, but each wavelength has a, has a length of this. So how many would I fit in there? Well, it's the total length 2t. Like, you know, he said divided by the wavelength. That is just as simple as that question. It's just that it sounds difficult. But it is as simple as that. Now, the next question, part B, says what? What is the phase difference between these reflected waves as they leave the film at the first surface? So the question is, what's the phase difference? So there was light coming in like this, and then this one went that way. And then went through two, two, and then went that way. What's the phase difference between these two? So how do we answer that question? Any ideas? Why do you say 180? But that's a phase shift between this coming in and that one being reflected. Okay, what else? So these two, there's no phase shift between them. No, there's no phase shift. Right? But it's going to go down and up. So the distance matters. So the phase shift between the incoming wave and that one is 180 degrees, but that's between them. And then, but this is gonna go through. Now the phase shift between this and this is going to be nothing, but that's between those two. I want the phase difference between this reflection and this other reflection. So how do we answer this question? So pretty much it's a different question than the ones you find in the textbook so I, That's why I put it as an example. So how do we figure it out? 
Well, let me ask you this. <clears throat> if they combine to give you a bright spot, what would be the phase shift between them? Phase shift. The angle. Zero. On the other hand, if they combine to give you a dark spot, you can say the phase shift is... 180 degrees or pi radians, right? So, this question is indirectly asking you, is it gonna be bright or dark? Because if it's bright, the phase shift is zero. If it's dark, the phase shift is 180 degrees or pi radians. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way of asking you, will it be bright or dark? Asking you that question in disguise by turning it into a phase shift type of question. If it's bright, the phase shift is, is zero. If it's dark, the phase shift is 180 degrees. So, is it bright or is it dark? Bright? Why? Because the phase shift is zero. How do you know it's zero? Yeah, if, if, if it is bright, the phase shift will be zero. But how do you know it's bright? And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I just want justification. And if you say it's dark, then why do you say it's dark? So there are a couple of ways to answer it. One way is to actually sketch it like I did with the wiggles up and down, or mathematically. Which one do you want to do first? Yeah. Hmm? Mathematically. Mathematically, okay. <laughs> so, mathematically, this problem. Is it case A, B, C, or D? C. Low, high, low, right? So it's this case. So if, and, and we know the wavelength of the light, and we know the thickness. So if it is bright, this equation has to be satisfied. With M being one of these, that's the only way to be satisfied. But if it's dark, so the phase shift is 180 degrees, then this equation is satisfied with M being one of these. So test this and solve for M. Test this and solve for M. The one that gives you an integer is the one that wins. If you get like something different, then that's not it. So what would you like to test first? Should I test the dark? Let me test the dark one. So if dark, then 2t equals m lambda in the film, right? So m would have to be 2t divided by the wavelength of the line in the film. That's two, and the, the thickness is 10 to minus four, right? Centimeters, so 10 to minus six meters. And lambda is, well, I never calculated it, I guess, 500 nanometers times 10 to the minus nine divided by 1.375 meters. This cancels that. What do you get for M if you do that? And if you get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then it's satisfied, it's bright. And the phase difference is 0 between them when they come out. So what do you get when you solve for M? You get 5.5? Same thing, right? So you get. 5.5. So is it satisfied or not? No, because m has to be 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. It could be 5 or it could be 6, but not 5.5. But the fact that it is right in between 5 and 6 implies that it's going to be the other one. So I'm going to test the other one then. So if, actually, that was, I used the bright one, right? Actually, I, no, no, I used dark first. So if bright, for this case, then. 2t has to be m plus a half 
lambda in the film. So m plus a half lambda in the film. Well, m plus a half is 2t divided by lambda in the film, which I already know is 5.5. So m plus 0.5 is 5.5. That means that m is 5. Herve, that's the one. And this is the formula for bright. So therefore, the answer is that the phase shift of the two waves when they come out is 0. Therefore, bright. with zero phase shift. Now, the other way to do it is to draw diagrams, right? Let me do it right here. So we have this, this. The wave comes in. Right, so I'm just going to consider one like this. Now, when it goes into the film, it's going to go, we calculated that it goes down and up 5.5 wavelengths, right? So that means that it's going to go down uh, half of 5.5 is what? It's 2.75? Yeah, 2.75 is half of 5.5. So therefore, it's going to go straight down one, two, and 75 is 3 quarters, so that's a half and a quarter. That's going this way. Now, what about this reflection over here? Is there a phase shift? This is plus, minus, plus, minus, I don't know. This is probably a good reference. The wave is going this way, right? When it goes back up, it wants to start a new wave. It wants to do this, right? Because it ended a wave when it got there. So. But does it do that? Was there a phase shift between this and this? Traveling from low to high? Yeah. Yes, so it actually, it loses that. So this is not what happens. So therefore, it really goes out like this. Down and up, and minus, plus, minus. So it goes like that. Now what about this one over here? It goes from high 1.375 to low. So is there a phase shift between the incoming and the reflected one? Yes or no? No, right? So therefore, it's at the negative amplitude, so that's like over here. Now it's going up, so this is down. So this is, that's a quarter and a half. So that's 0.75, and I think we said 2.75 would have to be the number of wavelengths in the film. So now I have to fit two of them. So that's one, wait, one, two, and then it goes out. And notice that, notice that this will interfere with that one constructively. They're both coming down. So it'll be bright, which means the phase shift is zero. So there are two ways to answer that question. But the question is phrased in a way that's a little confusing. It's just asking you, what's the phase shift when they come out? So usually, in the problems that you do in the textbook, um, they ask you, give me the thicknesses. And, and you'll notice that there are thicknesses that will give you bright, but for the same problem, the thicknesses in between will give you dark. So if you have a film like this, that's a film. That's a, let's say that's the front surface, and this is the back surface. And let's say that corresponds to a, that, thi that thickness is bright. I go down, and then it'll be dark. Keep going down, bright. Keep going down, dark. Bright, dark, bright, dark. So there will be many thicknesses that will give you a bright spot, and there will be many thicknesses that will give you dark spots. In this problem, they gave you a specific thickness. So the question is like flipped around compared to the most of the problems that you do for homework in the textbook. So, and it, instead of asking you is it bright or dark, they ask what's the phase difference. So if it is bright, phase difference you can say is zero. If it is dark, the phase difference will be 180 degrees. So I like the way they phrase the questions because from answering these questions, you learn something. 
about the language that's used, and so on. So that's that example. Let's see, this work. Question. Uh, I'm gonna pull this up. Okay. I am going to go get another marker while 